so I thought, okay, I've come to a sort of crossroads. Now, part of that crossroads was my children, I was now divorced, another story, now divorced, on my own with two children, who were now getting into adolescence, and we all know what that means, don't we? It was the rain scene. <laughs> yes, and drugs, and God knows what else. So there's me, on my own, with two children, and I knew that I couldn't just travel to do a film or go on tour in the same way as I had. I had to be permanent, I had to be there, to keep them on the, on the, on the rails. So I came back from playing Lady M, and I just thought also, if I can't play this quality of parts forever, if I don't want to play anymore, I've been famous, I've done lots of stuff, why do I want to be an actress just for the sake of it? And then I would have to wait probably till my age now to start getting interesting parts again in my early 60s. So what was I going to do in the meantime? I wasn't going to hang around waiting for a part. So I had this idea in the bath, and I can remember it very clearly, lying in the bath in the dark, and thinking, where can I put my talents and the things I've learned in another place? And I just had this idea. I could take it to people who weren't actors and help them feel more able, more confident, more, more able to express themselves and to deliver themselves to a wider public, which, of course, is key for us all in business. And I knew that it was the thing that most people found rather daunting and fearful. Um, public speaking is still one of the most frightening things for most people in the world. More frightening than death, I believe. Anyway, so how would I do that? So I sat down and kind of, plus the other thing that was a huge stress was the recession that hit. So we're talking 1990. And I had had my own house in the divorce, but I lived on topping up the mortgage. And the £10,000 overdraft that I could always pay off with the job became 50000 So I'd lie in bed with my stomach in total knots thinking, shit, how can I get out of this? I've got two kids, I've got no other means of support. I didn't have a husband who helped me out at all. It was all down to me. And I was absolutely terrified. And not only that, you couldn't sell your house even if you wanted to. So you're absolutely stuck. Now, actually, I did have, and I was very lucky, I did actually have a very supportive bank manager. Do you remember those? <laughs> <laughs> bank managers. Yes. Who well, I used to, no, you don't have them anymore. have a call centre in India. And I went along on a regular basis to her, and just sort of cried. <laughs> and said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he didn't stop taking my money, but he didn't foreclose on me. He didn't, and he was very supportive of me, and he helped me together some work for his group and I did some work there with them. But he just kept me supported and it was a huge help. And he loved the idea that I had and he thought it would be a winner. And I started to talk to people about this idea and everywhere I went, everybody said, that's a great idea. And at the time, you see, no one else was really doing it, certainly not as a business, and I wanted a business. I knew that. I didn't want to be a one-man band coach. I wanted a business. And I knew that it had to include my skill set, which is performance, is how do you get yourself across and make it work when you're feeling very nervous and also when you're in places where uh, it's, you don't feel it's good enough to be you. And we all understand what that feels like. You're on the show, you're being exposed, possibly being judged, or you feel you are. And that's a, you know, sort of a, a vicious circle. 